Hey everyone, it's been a while and I'm a little awkward, use my voice, but I decided to do a recording version because, let's face it, I don't feel like typing a shit ton of paragraphs and having to go through them. Like, I just went through my blogs trying to make as much sense and clearing some errors because, uh, face, I have bought bad grammar. I gave up on it, but like, so I decided to do a talk version and speak what I would have typed out. And the point is, this is also to say hi everyone thank you for being subscribed and everything i'm slowly coming back into making gotcha videos again i don't don't have too much hope i've been i need to get a job i need to get some stuff i get sidetracked a lot and do the gotcha club being buggy as fuck like i just can't even do that like i'm so tired of opening it up and it everything i've like spent like an hour working on like details and whatnot like positioning adjusting and everything you know all the annoying details you, that comes with editing and making multiple screenshots with slight changes and whatnot only to come back tomorrow and see everything be set to like what has not like it's just so much progression every time i open the app it makes making make videos so much unbearable it's like resetting from default and having to remake a whole character from scratch and supposedly I might come back because I've been getting into Gotcha Life 2. The only really, really annoying drawback that's holding back from working with that is you have to hand make all the poses. Like, for example, like, you don't have sit animations. You have to legitimately hand make, adjust everything for those poses. And it's like... Oh my god, so many poses. Sitting, laying down, jumping, walking, all that. Hand by hand. Anyways, enough of me yapping. Let's get down to base six. This main QA is for my creepypasta characters, or at least... I want to make a story. Like That's what most creepypasta is, is story characteristics, like... Again, forgive me, I'm not a hardcore creepypasta. I don't know every character. But one thing I do know for a fact that all creepypastas share is a horror or creep factor. Like, I don't know the entire stories of canon. Most, I only got we hooked the creepypasta after like, watching some of the gotcha videos on them. But I know their iconic OG canical story characters, like the ones from the actual website, are a lot more horrific. Like, for example, Jeff the Killer, again, I may not know his entire story. One thing for sure, he's a psychotic killer. And his most iconic thing is that creepy, bloody smile image that's been used so many times for jump scares and whatnot. Like, you get my point. They have a creep factor and very gruesome horror aspect to them. It's not just sunshine and rainbows. And since I started getting reconnected, I started to rework on all these bring back those characters i'm i'm working on like my own characters i create my own story characters because i know it starts like creep pasta flowers but again i haven't thought of a name for the first one but black banshee was also kind of inspired a lot from some of the ones i've seen that are ghost like but like anyways um this is qa getting honest opinion of what you guys know like i want to hear what you guys think of them so far like this is QA. If if you guys have been paying attention to my community section of my channel, I've been posting a lot of info or sort of blogging it, trying to give you guys info because I've been not making a lot of videos, just on my part. And I want some suggest like one thing I'm trying to prove on is the horror factor. Like these things are a lot scary if you have the imagination, even if it's not gotcha. I'm trying to make sure I do my best. To make it good enough so it's actually fit to be called a creepy pasta. So I'm here to also ask Q and A, and give little images and whatnot. But like mainly to get some opinions, thoughts, or what you find creepy about it. Like you know, questions, a Q and A, or if answer any questions regarding their stories, and I can might fill in through the comic section. Now let's get started. Originally, it started as three characters. Again, I'm I'm a sap. I have them, like, all somehow know each other. But, like, they all are connected to what I, like, to, uh, made up or created as 
torn fruit of acne or something like that, like a fruit that is a result of what they became. And also the pain and suffering that each of these characters had to endure is also a result of what they became. For example, uh, again, I need to think of a name. Keep Pasta Flutter or the one I'm currently working on, waiting on the poll views so I can try my best to make a good gotcha version of that character because I've yet to draw in like ages. So I don't know if I could draw a good sketch of a more realistic version of this character. But like his whole thing is surrounded, besides him being like a super fucking behemoth monster, his main thing is surrounded by hunger. He originally was a little boy. Short version, he was a young boy who suffered from being abandoned in those forests. You know, no survival skills, nothing, and surviving so long, suffering from hunger and almost starvation. And that was the short version of it. Most of these monsters are created from the fruit. But those are drawbacks. For example, I've mentioned before, due to his physical change, he actually suffers a pain depending on his hunger. If the more his hunger, the more pain he feels in his gut, and it's like unbearable. So he eats the rid the pain. Like his whole concept is doesn't sound as much, but then let's sit in for a moment of how this what this creature can do, what this creep here can is capable of, besides mentally scaring the shit out of you as you run for your life running from this pretty much like a super predator but also it somehow takes pleasure in the fear it drives into others when it's not driven by pure hunger it's not like berserk it tends to toy with you it gives you false sense of hope like basically dangling off the edge of death when you're hiding from it this thing takes the pleasure in the hunt but when it's purely fueled by insane hunger increase, it doesn't think, it runs, it chases, it kills. It doesn't leave the forest, sort of like Slenderman. Slenderman has its own area. This one, it sticks to the forest most of the time. As I said, I'm still working on the details, but the horror aspect is the fear of being hunted. Like, I started really leaning into that aspect for the horror. Other genres have done the same thing. You have Predator. A highly intelligent race with advanced hunting skills with a strict code of honor. But the fact that most of those prey were human and you were their prey. You were hunted. That aspect of being tracked down. Knowing at any moment you could die. Like, Especially even an alien did the similar thing. Like alien isolation. A lone survivor running from this almost unescapable predator. Who's almost looking for you like right around the corner. The fear and anxiety that is driven when being hunted by something that can end your life within seconds. I started building up on that. And then we have Black Banshee. Which, I'll get into, I guess, the lovey-dovey section later. But I'm giving the basics of these characters. I got more inspiration from Black Banshee from a phantom. Or her pain was from enduring. Like, okay, give him. Black Banshee's honey methods are mostly surrounded from her pain. She had to endure the horrible side of humanity. You know, those kinds of people who will use you. Scumbag like the scummies of scum. His, her father was one of them. Who pretty much was, besides being abusive, was a horrible money guard. And would sell even his own wife off to make a quick buck. Those kind of horrible people. The greedy kind. The ones who will use the lives of others for their own benefit. She despises them more than anything. So most of her targets are around those kinds of people in the world. And this is to say she enjoys torturing them with the power she's been given or obtained. Even though she became less human, she revels in making those scumbags of the world suffer immeasurably. Really. I started leaning more in her concept into the supernatural section of horror. You know, poltergeists, phantoms, banshees, the ones that make you hair down on edge. Like, there's been a lot of movies about ghosts lately. Like, the freaking, uh, what was it? The Nun, The Conjuring. Like, there's been a lot of ghostly horror stories. And when you think about it, that brings the creep factor up to 10,000. And the fact of how her abilities work. Once you see it in action, if I can manage to make a good video, because I am really planning to do it. 
the MEV of Happy Face with this music. This fits so well with the plans I have for her. It's just a matter of getting the background because the background stands everything for her horror factor. Set place in a destroyed school that was sponsored due to another money grabber. Let's just say you're going to see ghostly children on a new horror spectrum from a guy who's about to get what he deserves. <laughs> like, I'm really excited because I just can't imagine your guys' response when if I get this pulled off, the horror spectrum that she's about to inflict on the people who watch it. Yes, it'll be up jam music, but at the same time, the eeriness of the setting, the eeriness of joy in the concept, especially since her thing is beyond that mask, is a wicked smile. Like they say, put on a happy face and everything will be okay. <laughs> As for the third person, uh, I have to work on her. Like, I'm struggling with her. I won't go too deep into her, but, like, the third character was originally the mother of the first character. You know, Kipasa's mother. Like, they all know each other somehow before they became monsters. But the more I started thinking about it, the more I struggled how to improve her backstory or her reason to kill. Her motives to kill. And how to make the horror f her horror factor improve to the point where you will really shiver to the thought of her. Yes, I made a sort of arach arachnic base, but like I struggled to figure out how to implement her with the other two. The first ones evolved around hunting, the other ones evolved around stalking and inflicting pain amongst those that deserving. But her, I've been struggling. To think of how to, we make her an implementer. All I have is she's spider based. And she's the mother of the first creepypasta character. And as I was saying about the torn of fruit. The people who have consumed them and became these monsters. The fruit that resulted in their monstification of what they become. Has a sort of bond demonic connection of some sort. I've yet to sort of um, clear up. Like I said, the first character will literally eat anything. But what's protecting the other two characters is their bond and knowledge is how much they know each other and the fact that they're under the influence of the same fruit he is. So they have sort of a plot armor protection. Besides that, this fruit is pictured as a more demonic fruit that transforms a victim based on their inflicted pain that they've suffered. One suffered from hunger but became a predator to hunt for eternity. One seems revenge and hatred towards the people that make her suffer. And the mother, again, like I said, I, I'm struggling to work on improving hers. I'm going to show you the images of all three of them, and at least the one that I've completed so far, starting with Banshee. Black Banshee. I'm trying to lean into the phantom aspect. I improved on her OG version, which looks bad now. Now that I got to explore Gotcha Life 2, I, she had a glow up massively. I'm not sure about the mask, but it looks a little better and a little more cute when she's disguised because her original mask accidentally gave her off the image of Jenny. I don't know the name of that creep possibly. She's the one I've seen that has like a white skin, white, black lips, black eyes, black long hair. Again, forgive me, I don't know her original story or if she is a creepypasta. I do know people picture her having some hatred towards Jeff the killer. But, like, I didn't want to rip her look off, so I had to change the mask. And under the mask, under the mask is the horror of iron face she possesses that frightens the soul of others. Again, leaning into that banshee specter phantom sort of theme or demonic theme. Like I said, she's wicked underneath that cute mask of hers. But she enjoys frightening people. Again, like, I'm struggling to make this enticing. But hers is looks a lot better than she did with her OG. And I'd like to hear your opinions on her. If you want to know her abilities, leave a comment down below. And I'll make a video giving more a vocal version or description of her abilities. Probably won't need to. And moving on to 
creepypasta flares or quote unquote the unnamed one like again i'm trying to think of a name that fits his character or story because again i can't name everything flutters i'm still working on his in progress but a lot has been made in terms of beast factor like i like big monsters and a little jack like he's muscular but he also is very monsteristic given more muscular demonic i, I can't i'm hard to describe like very strong legs like he, there's a lot of factors i'm still working on one thing that i've got from everybody is trying to give him a skullish face like similar to a windy go or like a, fucking a snout like mouth with rows of teeth that are ready to pierce into its victim's flesh like i said he's a powerhouse he's something that will kill you on sight and which wendigos are known for their bloodlust and hunger like after playing until dawn i try to implement more of a ferocious thing but also an intelligent creature one that takes pleasure in the hunt like the predator it or something similar again he's still a work in progress even for tentacles because again i love like the doc oct version and the, and the utility of such appendages such as leeching strangling all sorts of things you can do but his main for but his main use of weaponry is his claws and mouth like i said he likes to bite off the heads of his food but if he's not driven by pure hunger he actually thinks smarter he tricks, he can mimic, he can mimic sounds, he can play with his food, like jejitimi. But w when he's suffering increased hunger, he becomes a berserk, unthinkable monster who will attack on sight. He will, it's like basically the juggernaut, but a zombie with much faster momentum. His size comparison, I've yet to scale, but I know he's no... He's much bigger than a small human being or fully grown man. And his strength is yet to be measured. But again, his factor is mostly in the hunt. And the fact that you have very little chance to escape. So you better hope he's not hungry. Not like it's going to help you. And the fa fact that, like, it's still a work in progress. But still, this let that ponder you. An intelligent behemoth of a hunter stalking you and quiet now if you guys have been paying attention and you made it through this video thanks for watching and please leave a bunch of comments ask your questions on these characters like anything you want to know or give opinion and thoughts on them like feedback is very much appreciated i'll be watching the comment section and hopefully when i finally get that amv up and running you guys will know that i've haven't forgotten about it. Like, I feel compelled to work on videos. It's just with my life, it's been sort of almost becoming a ghost channel. Yet the views and subscribers are still going up. But thank you, and please leave a comment if you made it this far.